Let's take a look at graphing on the Casio. Um, now this uh, says it's a bottle FX9960G, and that's what I'll actually list it under. This is the uh, free emulator uh, put out by Casio, um, but there is no 9960G. Uh, so I'm thinking it's meant to be a generic um, emulator to apply to many of their graphing calculators. Like for example, I have a um, Casio FX 9750G+, um, but none, none goes up that high. But anyway, regardless, the uh, same graphing we see on here is the graphing I'm using on my 9750G+. Well, we're going to take a look at the basic building blocks of graphing. We're first going to take a look at y is equal to x. <clears throat> Now, I know these are fairly simple graphs, but we're trying to get um, what the basic building blocks look like so we can then combine them together to get more complex graphs. Now, under the main menu, and if you're not there, uh, press your menu button, and that'll take you there. We want to go into the graph. So, you use your arrow keys to move it around such that you have graph highlighted, and then you press the EXE button. Now, when it comes up here, um, then we can just type our X and uh, I see this key it says X theta T is right next to the log uh, that's our X key so I'll push that and you'll see an X appear there and then we'll push the EXE that uh, accepts it now see the draw on the far right here the button right below that is the F6 so if I press F6 then that'll graph it for me now it's possible that your um, calculator is zoomed out or zoomed in, so it may not look exactly like this. If yours doesn't look like this, then we want to go to the zoom menu. So I do shift, and then you want to do the shift. See this bottom, bottom uh, menu appears, and zoom um, is F2, so I press F2. Now we've got box, back, in, out, auto, and then this little triangle here indicates there's more over there. So if I press F6, That'll bring up more choices. And the original is the one I want, so I press F1. And that'll be your standard viewing window, which I don't know what that is. 2, 3, 4, negative 6 to positive 6, and negative 3 to positive 3. But that should give you that graph then. Which looks like this right here. <clears throat> well, let's graph uh, y is equal to x squared. See what that looks like. Now, this um, across the top here says G and then uh, uh, arrows and then T. We do shift and then choose that, and that'll go back to where we can enter in Y1. Now, X squared, I up arrow to Y1, and I'm going to press my X key, and then I'll push the X squared button, and then press the X E, and then I'll choose F6 for draw. And that's our um, our x squared. Now this next one, I'm demonstrating how to graph y is equal to x to the third, but I'm looking specifically at how do you handle it when you have any number up there. x to the fourth, x to the fifth, x to the tenth, x to the twentieth. Well, I do shift and F6 to go back to my y1, y2. Um, I got Y1 highlighted, I up arrowed to it, so I'll press my X key, put my caret in, and then 3, and then press EXE. Then I do the F6 to choose draw, and that's our that's our graph. And our graph looks like that. Now let's take a look at how do you how do you graph X to a fraction? Now specifically, I'm focusing on do you have any fraction up here? One half, two thirds, three fifths, whatever it might be. But even more than that, this applies whenever you have more than a single number or a single variable in your exponent. The trick to put in your calculator is to put parentheses around the exponent when you plug it in. Other than that, you just type in as you see it. So I'm going to do a shift, F6, go back to uh, the Y1, and um, do an up arrow. Then I'll do an X key, caret, then beginning parentheses, 1 divided by 2, closing parentheses, and EXE to accept it. 
and then do draw and that'd be our graph let's take a look at y is equal to square root of x so do shift f6 to go back there upper order to y1 and um, square root I'm looking for it. it's above the x squared so I do shift x squared and then I, you always want to do a beginning parentheses so you should be enclosed inside of parentheses and then max key x theta t and my closing parentheses now if you just have a single x you don't need those parentheses there but it's good practice because when you get anything more complex than an x like you get x minus 2 you have to have those parentheses there and I press the x e and then I do F6 for draw. Again, I'm choosing that piece of draws here, and the button right below it is F6. And we see we get the same graph as before, which we should. X to the one half is the square root of X. Hmm. Now the cube root of X. Hmm. <clears throat> Grab a drink here. Well, I want to go back. By the way, um, to go back to the menu, you press menu to quit. Um, sometimes exit gets you out of a screen. Like if I press exit there, it gets me out of that one, but it doesn't get me out of this one. If I do shift exit, then that gets you out of some of them also. That's quit. The one that's for sure to get you out of whatever you're in, though, is the menu. That takes you back to here. And then I'll do in run graph and go back here. Okay, we're doing the cube root. Now above the caret, you see the cube root. So I do shift caret. And my eyes are bad. Uh, that wasn't the cube root. I wish I could make this a little bit bigger so I could see it. Maybe there's no cube root. There it is. Okay. Now um, let me come over here and I'll type delete. I went to the left of that and I pressed delete to clean that out. Okay. I think I see it now. Uh, shift beginning parentheses. And you see the cube root. Now again, we always want to put the beginning parentheses. And then we'll put our X key in. And closing parentheses. And EXE. And then F6 to draw. And that gives us our, our graph. Now let's take a look at the fourth root and what I'm demonstrating here is when you have any number four or above inside this slot here that's called your index so come over here and we'll go shift F6 to go back up here to Y1 and I want to put my index in first so I'll put four in and that one that I mistakenly chose first I'll do shift and then the caret and it puts the um, the radical symbol with an X. That X uh, represents uh, the index is put in first, the 4. Then I'll put my beginning parentheses, put my X key, closing parentheses, and then the EXE. And then I choose F6 to draw. And that gives me that graph. Like that. Let's take a look at the absolute value of X. Press my shift, and then I'm going to that GT, so F6, and up arrow to Y1. And you don't see the absolute value anywhere on a button or above a button. Uh, if you go into the option, then you'll see list, calc, hype, prob, num. Uh, the button right below the num is F5. So if I choose F5, then it brings up these choices. Absolute, INT, frac, random, integer. Absolute value is the one we want, so we choose F1 since that's right below it. And as always, you want to put your beginning parentheses in, and then your X key, and then your closing parentheses, and then EXE. And then if we choose F6 for draw, that gives us our absolute value. There we go. Now let's take a look at how to, um, how to handle fractions. We've got y is equal to x plus 2 over x minus 3. Anytime you have more than a single number or a single variable on top or bottom of your fraction, you have to put parentheses around it. So I want to put parentheses around top and parentheses around the bottom. 
Now, if I just had a single X up on top, I wouldn't need the parentheses, but they wouldn't hurt either. So if you want to begin to practice just always putting it, you could when you're doing fractions. Other than that, we enter it as you see it. So I'm going to do Shift, F6, up arrow to Y1, and then I'll do a beginning parentheses, uh, X plus 2, closing parentheses, divided by, beginning parentheses, X minus 3, closing parentheses, and then EXE. And then I want to use uh, draw, so F6. And um, this gives us our, our graph. Um, don't see all of it. You'd have to zoom out to see that. And uh, zoom out is covered in a, a different uh, video. Uh, but let me just give you the preliminaries right here. If you do Shift and choose Zoom, F2. See the out here? Uh, I choose F4. And uh, it's waiting for you to position your cursor where you want to zoom out at. And the center's okay. So I'll just go ahead and press EXE one time. And you see it zoomed out. So that gives us a little bit of a better picture of that particular graph. Now to set it back to where it was, if we uh, do Shift again and choose F2 for zoom, and then choose this arrow, F6, for more, you see the original, we'll press F1. That sits back to your standard viewing window. So what our graph looks like, what did it look like? Mm. Uh, okay. It's something like this. And then over here looks something like that right there. So that would be our graph. Okay, let's take a look at this one. This one isn't a basic building block. Um, it's kind of like the problem we just looked at. It's showing you a concept in the calculator. So we got dash square root dash x dash 3. Now some calculators this matters on, some it doesn't. Um, we're going to try it. I don't know the answer myself. I've, I've been creating these, uh, the same video on, on uh, every different uh, calculator I can. <laughs> but uh, in general, for your dashes. Let's talk about dashes. You have two. You have the one on the bottom row with the arrow, with the parentheses around it. That's a negative. And then you have the one on the side with no parentheses. That's a minus. If your dash is first in whatever, then it's a negative. See this dash here. This is the first in our problem. So it's a negative. Parentheses around it. This dash here is the first in our square root. So it's a negative. If your dash is between two things, between the x and the 3, for example, then it's a minus. Now, you might argue that this dash here is between the square root and the x, um, but that goes against our first rule that says if it's the first item in whatever, then it's a negative. Now, beyond that, we're just going to plug it in as you see it. And then we'll do some playing to see if it really does matter on this uh, calculator. Well, I'll do shift and F6, then up arrow. Then I'll put my negative in first. Then I want a square root. Uh, our square root is above the x squared. So I do shift x squared. Beginning parentheses. Then the negative. x minus 3. And then closing parentheses. And exe. And now let's draw it. And that gives us our graph. Okay, let's do some playing and see what we get. I'll do Shift and F6 to go back here. I'm going to up arrow. And I'm not sure if I know exactly how to edit that. Uh, let me do an EXE and see if that does it. Uh, shift. Um, hmm. Type. Let's try that. No. Some of that. Oh, well. Let me just type it in again. But this time, instead of there being a negative before the x, I'm going to put a minus there. So I'll do a negative, and then shift, x squared, beginning parentheses, and then I'm going to put a minus x, minus 3, uh, and close parentheses. Now again, the difference here is this time I'll put a minus before the x instead of a negative. And let's press the x, e, 
and then graph. It gives the same graph, so it doesn't matter there. If I go back, shift, and then F6, that's the way a TI Inspire was. It didn't care what kind of dash you put before the X. And let me type in it again. So put a negative square root, so shift um, X squared, wherever that's at. There it is. Do a beginning parentheses, and I'll put a negative because that's what it should be. X, and now let's put in a negative 3. Close parentheses. So instead of there being a minus between the X and a 3, I put a negative there. And I'll push uh, EXE, and then draw. Get a syntax error. And it tells us to press exit. So there it did matter. Um, that It was looking for the minus there. That's curious. The TI, uh, which is it's good, um, but the uh, TI Inspire just gave us a wrong graph. So again, when it's between two items like that, it should be a minus. So if I put a negative, shift, uh, x squared, beginning parentheses, negative x, minus 3, and then close parentheses, and then exe, and then draw. And that gives us our graph. Anyway, that's how you tell which dash is what in a problem. Let's take a look at this one. y is equal to x to the power of x squared minus 3x plus the square root of x. Now remember what I said earlier. If you have more than a single number or a single variable in your denominator or in your exponent, you have to put parentheses around it. So as I plug this in, I want to make sure I put parentheses around the exponent like that. Other than that, I kind of type it in as I see it. So do a shift and F6, up arrow to Y1, and then I'm going to do my X key, caret, beginning parentheses, and then X squared. So I do my X key again, X squared, minus 3X, plus square root of X. So I do shift x squared for the square root symbol, beginning parentheses for the square root, x key, closing parentheses for the square root, closing parentheses for the, the exponent, and then exe, and then draw. And that gives us that, that graph right there. Looks like that. Now, um, this is the basic building blocks for the uh, Casio graphing calculator. Um, I'm definitely not an expert in it, as you can tell, um, but I have students come in with the Casio, uh, and I'm never very much help in class, so this is a, a vid videos I can refer to them, uh, refer them to, so they can uh, don't have to go out and buy a brand new calculator. They can use the one that they they've already purchased or one they they got from somebody else. Now, the reason why we uh, focus so much on graphing calculator in college algebra is given by this example. Let's say you love plotting points in your previous math class. Everybody else was happy with three points. Uh, you went above and beyond. You did like nine or ten uh, points to get the graph. Like this example here, well, that's obviously the uh, parabola, the U-shaped graph. Or is it? Maybe it's the heart-shaped graph. You just didn't plot enough points. Maybe it's coming up like this and it's coming back down over here. This one's coming up like this and coming back down over here. Maybe it's coming down over at x equals 500. You just needed to put 500 points in your t-chart and you would have saw it come back down. Plotting points is one of the worst ways to graph. Um, unless you already know what the graph looks like to begin with. But then the question becomes, why are you even graphing it? Now, the graphing calculator is a, a step better. Um, a lot better, to be honest. But it's still not perfect. Because if I'm looking at my standard viewing window... It may just show me this, and I think, okay, well, yeah, that's a graph. It's the parabola. I don't see this above above here. Um, we'll cover later on the leading coefficient test that helps you to see that there's more uh, going on here than what we see. But we still cannot use the graphing calculator to get the exact picture. You start zooming out too much, and things get really, really uh, skew, and you can't tell what's going on. Um, if you want to find a true picture, uh, you have to go and take a Calc 1 uh, business calc class, something like that. Uh, there's a whole chapter on how do you find out the true picture of the graph. But this was uh, graphing on the imaginary FX9960G uh, uh, Casio calculator, which should be uh, pretty similar to um, their regular um, Casio graphing calculators. <laughs>